Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and we have a new tech stream release of Unity. These are the releases, we get two of them a year, and these are the ones that add the new features. I'm going to go hands-on with it. I'm going to show you some things that maybe don't display that well, but are definitely going to make a difference in Unity developers' lives. The first one is, let's just say, this visual explanation is going to be underwhelming, but what it is is actually quite nice. And that is when you hit the play button, it plays faster. That is one of those things, again, in a presentation, it doesn't make for the coolest presentation, but it is definitely one of those things Unity developers will like. Another thing that I can't really demonstrate on camera that well is the asset importer is also faster. There's a lot of productivity tweaks in this release, and those are definitely two of the nicer ones. Uh, now we're going to show something that does show well on camera, and that's material variants. So we've got this ball over here in our scene. And what I want to do is go ahead and create another object. So I'm going to go here to the room, and I will create a sphere like so and I will move the sphere up in the scene over in the scene like so so now we have this object what I want to do is I want to apply this base material to this object but I want to be able to make tweaks to it so this is thinking about this like uh, C++ inheritance where you got a base class you change the base class all the things in that base class change but you can have your derived class you can make changes to it as well so in order to do this what I'm going to do is select the ball component of this guy over here I'm going to grab the brass material and I'm going to select said material so there is our brass material all right so I forgot to do do not disturb on my phone earlier so I already have a duplicate I've done this again all right so what I'm going to do is a create material variant all right there we go and then spoiler alert you get the other one by the way it doesn't get you a nice preview version until you actually um tab out and, and select something else, select back in. But there we go. Our brass material is now applied to our second object. So that just looks like a clone. Nothing really special there. But if you clone it in the past, when you make any changes to this guy, it will happen to this guy. You can get some changes that you don't necessarily want. So here is our base material. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to make a change to it and show you what the what how it happens. So let's go here. Let's go to the textures here. Uh, general. All right. So let's apply this texture to this material. So here, let's let's edit our material. All right, let's go back, select our material, edit our material, go over here again, select our textures, and we're going to apply this texture over the base map. So there you see, when I do this to the material, eventually, there we go. So it updated both materials. Now that may not be something you want to do. You might want to just do it in the drive material, but this still has that relationship. So when this one updates, this one changes as well. But with the material variant, you can actually do it directly uh, to the variant here. So we're going to go ahead and we'll select this guy. We'll select the material there. So this is the variant version, not the original version. And now if I go ahead and I make changes to just it, now we come down here, we can make changes uh, at this side. Uh, let me see what else we want to change. So let's, let's see if I just do a color tint on it. Will it show up anything? So there you see the derived change is only in the variant version. What this allows you to do is basically make base materials, and then you can create inherited child versions from them. There's some, some details of it. We'll get to that when we get to the release notes. But I think this is one of those things in the workflow that will definitely um, help people out in the long run. So we've got the new material variant functionality. That one is definitely nice. Another new feature that they've got here is if you use Command or Control K, um, we have this search functionality. Here is an example of a search. By the way, I find this UI is incredibly buggy. Um, so we got these visual representations of things you can search for. So I could say, search for all meshes with over 1,024 vertices. And I could come in here, I could change this at any time. So I'm going to do this anything with over 5,000 vertexes. And it searches through my entire scene and finds that accordingly. That's definitely nice. Now, another thing, and I think this one is bug. Let's say I want to find all of the balls in my scene. I can do a ball. We've got this option over here for a query builder or not, but there's this tab to filter. It doesn't seem to do anything. And the, the UI to add new things is a little bit clunky over here, but we're searching for balls. Now I want to search for balls of a certain type. So we come in here and I'll search for extension, file extension, like so. So now I want to say, find me all of the FBX files with the file name ball. So this visual search, you have all of these new parameters and controls over it that you can work with. Um, and there's been some extensions to it as well. So there's these visual options, various different areas. You can search specifically in menus, in files, in settings. Um, you have the previous search results. Unfortunately, in order to get to this result, you have to come up here. So it's weird. So you've got to say, so I've got the ability to narrow down my searches here, for example, right? So let's say I search for all of the ball. Wait a minute, where did my narrow down option go? And this press tab to filter thing doesn't do anything. 
So there does have to be some uh, usability issues with the visual search, but there is definitely some new functionality being added. Now you see down here, we do have a bit of an error going on. So I don't know if it's bugged or glitched or whatever, but that is another thing to warn you about tech stream releases. Uh, there's always some broken stuff. Uh, that is one of those things to be expected, and that could be one of the breaks that we had there. Now, the last thing I'm going to demonstrate here, um, you have to set up. So you come in here, edit, uh, and then go to your project settings, and you want to go to the settings for the player. And under player, we now have these new options uh, for frame timing stats. This is actually quite useful. This allows you to enable where you can now in the profiler options, you, by the way, this is all programmable, so you can do your own code and tooling for the profiling this as well. Uh, you can see how your CPU and GPU are being bunged. By the way, when you enable this setting, this setting is uh, performance killing. So it's going to hurt your, if you're not using it, turn it off. This also has another dependency on uh virtual something other support. When you first enable it, it'll tell you there is another feature that you need to turn on. Once you have done that, go in and do your, um, create your build and create a, so in this case, I'm gonna do a uh, development build in order to see this functionality. We will do a build and run and let's go here. And now in our application, what we have the option of doing is hit control and delete. It will bring up the, uh, the bug console, the render details console. And I'm going to page down and we go into display stats. And what you're going to notice is we have this new option here for bottlenecks. Now you'll see my GPU is 100% the bottleneck right now. And then as I run through the scene, we switch it out. So sometimes it's present limited. And then sometimes you're gonna find again, there's the GPU again coming to the foreground. Now, the interesting thing is there's not a lot going on in the scene that it will ever really tax the CPU, but I do believe if when I, actually, it's very random. When I came here last time, this pushed my GPU up. This time it is not, there we go. So we see a little bit more of the GPU. So you can see where your machine is bottlenecking if it's between CPU and GPU performance. Uh, now do be aware again, when you have this thing enabled, so here again in semi real time, when you have this enabled, it will have an adverse effect on, on effect on your performance. So you're gonna generally want to not have this turned on until you actually need it. Now, another interesting thing is for some reason on Mac, uh, running this in 4K really killed the performance. But anyways, uh, that is the new uh, frame details. And now we're gonna head on over to the, um, the release notes for this particular release. Okay, so what we've got here is an announcement of it. Um, not not a ton of exciting things here. It's the 2021 uh, tech release. Uh, we've got uh, extensibility options to the editor. So the UI toolkit, we covered it in the previous version in 2020.1 or 2022.1. They added even more features for tools developers looking to customize the editor, uh, added tree view with multi-column support, new vector drawing APIs, and so on. So if you're creating editor tools, there's definitely a lot more functionality in there. Another thing that people have been asking for is spline authoring. So the new spline authoring framework is available as a package. It's designed to create and manipulate splines in engine, uh, above all by letting programmers extend functionality with tools and custom components such as instantiating geometry and moving along a spline. So if you're creating a tool and you want to have spline controls for it, uh, this new um, thing could definitely be useful for you. Uh, they've improved procedural creation of materials, creators using code to generate materials. They extended the material API to all material properties, uh, now supporting keyword states, HDRP diffusion profiles, IES profiles, enhanced procedural material usage in editor or at runtime. There's a new API for the file system to create tools for bundle asset visualization. Now, now do keep in mind, again, these aren't things that I can demonstrate really well on screen, but they're, they're productivity features, especially if you are extending the Unity game engine itself. Um, so we have some productivity improvements here. Uh, let's see what's actually magic here. Uh, they've got the rendering and visual effects, the material variants. We just checked that out earlier on. Material variants offer integrated powerful workflow to reduce iteration and authoring mistakes when reusing materials in teams where artists manage large amounts of assets available in both HDRP and the ERP. Uh, material variants allows you to create material hierarchies where children can share common properties with the parent and override only the properties that differ. Definitely handy if you've got a bunch of base materials uh, so you can derive versions of it, make tweaks to your base, but they won't override uh, the changes that you have made to the top level. Uh, so definitely nice there. We do have the improvements uh, to this visual search. Again, I do find it's a little bit on the buggy right now. Um, 
but they've got visual search queries to help you find what you're looking for. Additionally, you can build more complex queries and leverage the editor's object picker for more precise selection for object fields. It's just weird because you can only add these pickers before you start your search query, which seems very strange to me. It could be a usability thing. I might be using it wrong. Uh, but this tool on the whole, the search built into Unity, the most recent versions, is definitely a nice thing. And getting more functionality to it is nice as well. So in the 2D world, uh, Sprite Atlas version 2 is now the default for all projects. On top of that, uh, PSD 2 our Photoshop document PSD extension format. Uh, we've got new controls for layer management, so you can control over what layers you actually import. So you can have some things that stay in the Photoshop side of things. So if you only want to bring in aspects or individual layers, or if you are having uh, one, you know, basically a game asset that's in one document but multiple assets there, uh, you can do that via layers as well. Uh, sprite, swap, sprite swap feature now has streamlined keyframing and previews, making sprite swapping for 2D animations more intuitive. Uh, 2D physics got the improvement of a Delaunay tessellation. So this is when polygons are too thin or small. They're filtered out by the physics engine. It stops that by doesn't produce uh, thin ones, but also produces fewer polygons to cover the same area. So if you're using physics in 2D, the new uh, Delaunay, which I probably saying wrong uh tessellation engine should be an improvement there uh package manager had some improvements um IL2 CPP back end will now always generate fully shared generic version of uh, shared versions of all generic methods. Uh, quality of life versions in the editor. I mentioned earlier on the play mode uh, to import textures and small files faster. Uh, it'll be faster when you hit play mode. Uh, better UI for undo redo operations. Cancel button on the pro, uh, project open progress window and shortcut manager was improved in some way or form. We also saw this, I showed you this earlier on, uh, frame timing manager has been added in. There is an API to work with it, but you can also see up on the, I'm not actually sure what this is actually called, but on the in-game profiler debugging tool, uh, you can see the bottlenecks of your uh, frame. Definitely a useful thing there. Uh, we've got some uh, um, platform specific optimizations there. And that's kind of the extent of it. So here you can see like the timeline. Uh, this is going to be the last, second from last release of this year. So we got the LTS. This is the version if you're starting a game today and you're gonna be shipping like two years from now and you want to have some stability in your life, that is the version you go with. Today's release is this one right here, which is a tech stream release. There will be one more tech stream release within 2022, probably in four or five months. Uh, and then it will have the next release basically uh, probably four months after that will be the next LTS version of it. And generally the LTS versions roll in all of the features that you had here. So you get stable, experiment, experiment, stable, experiment, experiment, and on it goes. Uh, again, as you can see here, also LTS versions are supported for, uh, I think it's a two year window. So the LTS 2019 version just lost support today. So if you're starting a new project, do not use the 2019 LTS version, use the 2020 or the 2021 version. And what we looked at today is the 2022.1 LTA, or sorry, tech stream version. This is one with the new and fancy and funky new abilities. Although to be honest, it's uh, in terms of shiny and new and exciting, uh, this is probably the only really kind of woo feature in there. Uh, but the tooling stuff, like the ability of this new spline authoring framework is definitely going to be useful for cre people creating tools, which will have a trickle-down effect of having uh, better tools in the app store or better tool features and functionality yourself. Having it uh, import assets faster and play faster, better profiling tools. Those are the kind of things that make life better, even if they don't, you know, have the shiniest new features. But I think a lot of you new users right now are like, please stop giving us new features and just make the ones you've got work better. And that's kind of what this release was all about. I'm curious what you think of Unity 2022.1 text stream release. Let me know. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.